Of all of the statistics in Tarkov that we have to mull over when looking at a weapon, the one that is the most veiled and misunderstood is accuracy. Red AR advanced tubes improve it, suppressors that reduce it, and now with the latest iteration of hotfixes, red dots and hollow optics that either can reduce accuracy or improve it. But most people in the game, myself included, do not have a fully encompassing understanding of how accuracy is calculated and how that affects someone's ability to shoot precisely at their target. So enter my newfound friend, Tower. Tower is someone that likes precision. Pinpoint precision. Here's a quick clip just to give you an idea of the kind of player that Tower and his squad of buddies are. I think the other one's behind the tank. Oh, yes, yes, he's on the move, he's on the move. He's bobbing and weaving. The dude is stone cold. A ton of this information that I'm sharing with you today is directly as a result of Tower and his friends' efforts. They have a rather private think tank discord that has to do with all of what I'm sharing with you, and Tower is readily available for people that want to look further into this stuff and or assist with the testing that they've been doing in the Tarkov official Discord. So reach out to him there. The math for this is actually considerably more precise than what I'm showing you in the real world, but for the sake of Tarkov, we'll try to keep it simple. And as an aside, this video and its parts is literally years of work that has gone into all of the ballistics testing that these guys have done. So this video might run a little long. There's just that much information. I don't want to pretend that I'm making claim to any of this testing that has been done. I'm merely just trying to, with Tower's blessing, truncate this into something that is a little bit more palatable for people that don't like to be crazily analytical. No offense to you analytical guys. Before we can get into accuracy and how it affects our precision, we first need to be able to understand and gauge distance. Lucky for us, we have mil dots. A mil, or mil dot, stands for mil radian, or one one thousandth of a radian. Mills are the tiny dots and crosses that you see on most scopes, and they are measured from the center of the dot to the center of the next dot, or from cross point to cross point, like on the EOTech Voodoo. They are then visually subdivided into mental tenths. To simplify this, if you had a target that was 40 centimeters in circular size, at 400 meters, the center of a mill dot to the center of the next one is 40 centimeters in size. To extrapolate this then, 300 meter target is 30 centimeters per mil, a 200 meter target is 20, a 100 meter target is 10, etc. Scopes have two focal planes. Scopes that utilize the first focal plane will have a reticle that increases in size as magnification is increased, i.e. everything gets larger in the picture. Scopes that utilize the second focal plane do not have a reticle that increases in size. To complicate things, there is a difference in Tarkov's math for ranging a target versus calculating the accuracy cone of your gun. For precision shooting, it is wise for Tarkov to understand both. If you want to range your target, this math only works for the second focal plane. For Tarkov, we will say that it's the max magnification of the scope, although this is super crude. For accuracy calculations, in the sake of simplicity, we use the first focal plane. But our first problem is that we don't have a target with a given size. So how do we figure that out? Well, we are only given one measurement from Tarkov, the distance of a longest shot in raid that hit an enemy. This means we could potentially use a player model as a ruler. So how is the distance to that target actually measured? Well, there are several ways Tarkov could have measured the distance of a projectile being fired by a gun. One would be merely a straight line distance along a flat horizontal plane at the elevation of either the shooter or the target without consideration at all for elevation. The other would be to consider bullet trajectory as it flies through the air at that angle. This is otherwise known as line of sight. Think of the line of sight as a hypotenuse of a triangle, you know, the, the long line. The distance of the shot is measured in linear distance of the bullets travel along the trajectory of your shot. After several separate tests, from varying elevations, we can confirm that the bullet's distance measurement, as shown in Tarkov, is that of line of sight and not of some horizontal plane method. This is good for us. It makes range finding in the scopes of the game considerably easier. So, we have a player model as a ruler. We have a distance calculation on our end of raid screen that can act as a check on our mil dot math, 
and we have mill dots to help us dial in our distance. Easy claps, right, boys? Well, okay. From, from here on out, we're going to be moving through some images and calculations that Tower has been doing through various patches. As a quick aside, these pieces of data have not been double-checked as of yet for point 12, but it's yet to have been shown to have changed or been disproven. So for now, let's assume that everything here is still valid. Also, since we aren't completely sure of the unit of measure, we'll refer to our units as Tarkov meters, or TM. Oh, dad jokes. For the purpose of ranging our target, we'll assume that our mill dots are to scale. Remember, we said that if they were to scale, then one mil is 40 centimeters at 400 meters. By this measurement, as seen here in the EOTech Voodoo, that would mean that at 6.26 units and a distance of 217 TM, the target would be approximately 136 T centimeters, or 1.36 TM. For those of us that only speak in freedom units and not the metric system, that means that our target is 4 feet 5.5 inches tall. That would mean that a SCAV or a PMC model is about a forehead's worth of height taller than that of an Oompa Loompa, which obviously doesn't make any sense. We can't use this for the sake of calculating accuracy, but we can use this to range our targets. To put this another way and to give everyone a gauge on the voodoo, to figure out distance to the target, you would divide 1,360 by the number of mils, and that would give you your range. If the target is 10 mils tall, it's 136 meters. If they're 5 mils tall, it's 272 meters, etc. And a quick note, none of the scopes in this game are to scale. Every single one of them gauges distances to targets differently because of the math for target size being different for every single sight picture. Lucky for you, there's a resource where most of this is done for you already, which I will share in the description and the comments section. And now on to accuracy. Accuracy is measured in minutes of angle, or MOA. A one degree angle can be subdivided into 60 minutes, and those minutes can be further subdivided into seconds, and so on. The accuracy stat on the guns in the game and their numeric values are given in this way. Again, this is good for us because it gives us a unit of measurement. But in order to be able to accurately visualize this, we still need a scale to work with. Remember that I said that the distance calculation is based on the distance traveled by the round as a line of sight. So what we needed was a distance gauge with a reference to target size. Luckily for us, several scopes have a gauge on them to help find the range of a target for a given height, like that of the PSO. The PSO has a range finder built into it. The way this works is as follows. At 200 meters, if a target is 1.7 meters in size, it would be the size of this bracket. In this screen capture, we can see that there is a scab target that is slightly smaller than that of the range finder. In this case, the height of the scab is about 72 pixels at a range given to us by BSG of 143 TM. In this scope, the gauge leads us to believe that a height of 55 pixels then would be 200 TM for a 1.7 TM tall target. If we do a little mathing and cross multiply this out, solving for X, blah, 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 this comes out to say that a scav at 200 TM fits perfectly into this bracket. So our scav is 1.7 TM tall. Behold the scav, the Rosetta Stone, in Escape from Tarkov. Now we have a scale to work from, and the scav is that scale. Checkmate, Nikita. So back to our voodoo scope. If we want to accurately estimate the accuracy of the voodoo, we have to again do some mathing. Our scav, we know from the PSO, or assume, is 170 TCM because of the PSO. But we know the voodoo estimates this at 136 TCM. So that means we have a ratio of 136 to 170. This means that the voodoo scope's mills are about 1.2 times larger than those of the PSO. And again, this is only for the Voodoo. Every single scope in Tarkov has a different scale. Scopes with variable magnifications have different scales for each plane. For example, take a look at the Henselt. On low power, our ranging math says that our scav is 72 TCM tall, otherwise known as the size of a lawn flamingo. On high power, the Henselt says our scav is 325 Tarkov meters tall, which would be tall enough to look down the rim of a basketball hoop. Obviously, this would mess up any kind of accuracy calculations. Every single scope in the game then needed to be ranged separately and then compared to the PSO and mathed out with the ratio calculations so that the conal accuracy could be calculated accurately. Dad jokes. Which leads us to our conal references. 
As I mentioned before, accuracy is measured in degrees and minutes of angle. Tarkov gives this as a degree reference with a decimal representation. To calculate this, you simply would multiply out this number given by Tarkov by 60. Once the ratios got calculated and the scopes scaled correctly for this accuracy, we can then start to see a visual representation. How we come to this is as follows. Here we have a baseline TX-15 with its associated baseline accuracy stat. To find our reference point, we can then go to the spreadsheet that Tower provided, click on the link for the numeric value that's closest, and that gives us the following visual. The colored circles represent the conal spread potential of each shot that is taken. Modified, the TX-15 has an overall maximum potential accuracy stat of this. This tightens up our shot cluster to a visualization of this representation. All of this originally came about as the result of the headshot shotgun task. The question became, what is the most accurate shotgun? And how far away can I be to actually hit the shots that I needed to? Shotguns, as seen here, are horribly inaccurate. The most accurate of which is the long-barreled MP-153 using superformance rounds. In fact, you can actively see the accuracy stat of the gun actively changing as different round types are chambered into the shotgun. Here, we have regular buckshot, followed by flechettes, followed by superformance, and the associated accuracy cones by just simply changing the chambered rounds. But there is one final, rather large curveball to all of this. All of the calculations on the spreadsheet, all of the accuracy cones, they are all based on a gun in pristine maximum 100 out of 100 durability. And durability has a rather drastic effect on your firing spread, even at something at short range as 100 meters. For example, take a 100 out of 100 durability ADAR versus that of a 100 out of 100 M4. At 100 meters, aiming at a rivet on this metal door on woods, the spread of the shots is approximately 30 to 35 pixels. This is true for both a full durability M4 as well as that of the ADAR. However, if you take an 80 out of 80 ADAR with the exact same accuracy stat and fire it, the accuracy decays enough to where the conal spread of the round is in effect doubled. This means that at 275 Tarkov meters, a full durability ADAR would headshot a scav 80% of the time. But at 80% durability, it would headshot that same scav only 35% of the time. Your aim could be perfectly dialed in, but if your rifle is worn, that could cost you just based on the RNG alone. The last thing that comes into play with this is the velocity of each round. Now, there's kind of a difficult way to really gauge this accurately. But suffice to say that the faster the round is, the slower or less degradation you see in bullet drop at range. Using this simple graphic from the VSS, we can simply see that SP5 at 295 Tarkov meters per second ends up coming in right about where the reticle is, and BP at 300 lands perfectly on the line with the other round types spread differently therein throughout. So obviously it will depend on what ammunition you're using as well. And like anything else, these kinds of things take practice. Guys, I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody that has been supporting the channel. Um, by the time that I'm uploading this video, as of now, I think we're about 100 or so subscribers away from 10,000. Uh, my goal this year was to try to hit 10K before the end of 2019. And it looks like we might actually pull that off. So I just want to say thank you to all of you that have been supporting, donating through the streams, subscribing here and on Twitch. Thank you guys so much. I'm actually creating this video on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and I couldn't think of something that I was more thankful for other than that of my own family uh, than to have you guys as supporters and allow me to quite literally live something that has been a dream of mine forever. So thank you for letting me be able to do this. Uh, I genuinely, genuinely appreciate you all. That being said, if you feel like coming and checking out my completely awful content on Twitch, you can find me at twitch.tv slash one peg. Like that big guy that smashes bricks on his forehead during the Kumite in Bloodsport. And uh, I stream every single day. So if you want to come and hang out, please do that. 
I want to say thank you so much to Tower for letting me not only use all of his data in creating this video, but also in giving me permission to try to explain this in a way uh, that everyone could hopefully better understand. Um, if I did miss something, please let me know in, in the comments section. I think I rewrote this uh, 10 different ways, 10 different times. Um, I'm probably 40 or 50 hours into the creation of this video. Uh, so I just, again, hope you guys dig it. Uh, if you do, please consider letting a friend know. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Peace.